taking off I'm taking off the Euro rig because James was making fun of me. So I guess I'm I guess I'm gonna dry or die today, so you're so mainstream. Uh, what's going on everybody? It's me with another video. I've had a couple days off this week, which is the most I've had off in like five months. So I'm I'm making some content. But today I want to do something that's near and dear to my heart. This is going to be kind of some tips on creek fishing. So the creek's behind us. I'm here with my buddy Jack. Um, and we're just going to have a fun creeking day. I grew up doing it in Virginia. My first fish on a fly was a brook trout um, in Shenandoah National Park. So it's something that I like to do to just remind me of the pureness of the sport. It's not for Instagram clout or CBD brand deals. Even myself, I have to remind that, you know, there, there's more to this than that. But I am fishing a seven foot two weight Echo Carbon XL. I love this rod. I do not like to creek fish with rods under seven feet. And the reason why is I like to do a lot of dapping, just a lot of high sticking a la Tenkara. Um, and I'll break that down for you guys when we get creek side. Um, but I'd like longer rods. This is a two way. I have a Redding and Zero on here. You don't have to go crazy with a creek setup. And then I have a nine foot 5X tapered leader here. Um, this is usually the platform that I build uh, my boat leaders out of when I'm on the lawn. But today what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna chop off, you know, maybe two and a half feet off the back and put a perfection loop in there. I don't want a nine foot leader. You know, I want a leader that's the length of the rod or, or a little bit shorter so I can get in there and high stick and make short, accurate casts. So I'm just gonna cut the end of this off and get rigged up. Yeah, so something to consider again, just chopping your leader back. So now I have this nice, short, tapered leader. There's still enough mass in the butt section if I turn over some, you know, bigger foam flies. Um, and then just, you know, you're just gonna do your loop to loop um, to your fly line. So this one has a welded loop in it. I'm just gonna pull that off, put this in the car. You don't wanna hurt the earth, right? Protect Gaia. Um, and then we're just gonna feed this through and I'm just gonna fish a single dry. Why? Because we're creek fishing. It's just, it's nice to enjoy some of the simpler things in life. And in terms of creek fishing, the nice thing with these fish I've actually never fished here, uh, so, but the nice thing with, when you fish a creek is these fish are the opposite of smart. So pick your favorite dry fly. I'm gonna go deep into my childhood and grab a royal wolf, and we'll see what they want down there. Need the paillette paste. Uh, we forgot our, our gink, so you gotta improvise, I guess. <laughs> show you a couple things to think about when you're fishing creeks. This is why I love a rod that's seven feet or longer. I'm gonna dap and it's Tinkara, basically. So all I'm gonna do is reel in all my line so there's just a little bit hanging out and I'm just gonna high stick my drive through this hydraulic. Casting's gonna be tough because there's this huge recirculator so if I lift all my line up, high stick it off the water, I'll get a better presentation. fishing is it's okay to lay your line over objects. There's a rock in front of me. I'm just going to drape my fly line over that um, to get the best drift that I can in here. creek fishing is you want to pick every pocket. I'm starting here and I'm going to work all these little pockets and move my way up. I'm not just bombing a cast all the way to the head.
Another tip when you're fishing small streams is dressing in drab colors and earth tones. These wild fish in these smaller, shallower creeks can spook if you're wearing something really loud, uh, like reds, things like that. So something to consider uh, when you're creaking. Sometimes an upstream opportunity doesn't always present itself when creek fishing. It's okay to skate your fly. Skating your fly is bringing that fly under tension and letting it skate across the surface of the water. And that way, you'll be surprised how many fish will come up and like a little bit of movement on the dry fly. It's not always the way to go, but when it does work, it works really well, if that's even a sentence. Another thing to consider when you're creek fishing is not to work it too fast. Make sure you're picking all the little pockets and when you come to a big deep hole, make sure to spend a little more time than you should think. A couple times today, Jack and I stayed at a spot a little longer than we thought we should and it yielded fish. Sometimes taking that extra effort will add a couple more fish into the net. If you're in close quarters, one of my favorite ways to fish creeks is utilizing a bow and arrow cast. So what you want to do is make sure your length, your rod, your leader, you're going to have enough to pull back on it. It's all about the way that the tip flexes. I like to hold below the hook point with the fly inverted and I come back straight up over the rod tip and I can get that bow and arrow cast out where I want to fish. It's also great if you want to tuck up your fly under obstruction. So those are some tips that I hope will put some more fish in the bag your next time you fish a creek. Just want to give a shout out to my guy Jack. Thanks again. Jack's a guide on the San Juan. Um, I'll put his info down below and he's also got some awesome, an awesome YouTube channel. So be sure to check that out. Thanks again everybody and I'll see you guys on the next video.